Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, E Hong's pilotless air taxi completes first manned flight. Army Aviation explores and expands drone applications. And Starship's first V3 booster crumples in pre launch testing. And I'm your host, Talon Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight. From electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Ehang's pilotless air taxi completes first manned flight. Ehang has logged a major milestone in the development of its pilotless air taxi, logging its first human-carrying flight in the urban Middle East. Working alongside Qatar's Ministry of Transport, the company flew its EH-216S autonomously between the port of Doha and Katara Cultural Village in a series of trials designed to validate real-world air taxi operations. The flights demonstrated the aircraft's ability to bypass surface congestion and complete the 30-minute roadway trip as an 8-minute zero-emission aerial shuttle. The campaign centered on the difficult task of getting regulators to take autonomous flight systems seriously, proving that the EH-216S can reliably execute point-to-point operations in dense urban regions. Qatar's Civil Aviation Authority boldly allowed the test program to proceed within the city center for a more realistic look at operations. According to Qatar's Ministry of Transport, the tests were a major step toward smart, low-carbon mobility. Integrating aerial mobility into the country's wider transportation network aims to support Qatar National Vision 2030 by diversifying infrastructure, reducing emissions, and improving efficiency. Moving forward, the partners plan to evaluate additional phases, including route development, infrastructure, approval of operational systems, and safety assurance processes. Potential next milestones include airport-to-city shuttle routes, tourism-focused air taxi corridors, and expanded integration of eVTOL aircraft into Qatar's transportation planning. After the break, FedEx deploys sustainable aviation fuel at two major airports. Martha, you know, it's really been getting dark early lately. What are we supposed to do with our evenings now that it's getting dark by 4 p.m.? How about we work on a ground school course? Well, a really good idea would be for us to review our night flying course. And folks, it's a great idea for you too, especially since now we are offering 20% off all King Schools courses. Just use the code word PECAN to get 20% off through December 4th. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next gen minute. FedEx deploys sustainable aviation fuel at two major airports. FedEx is quickly expanding its use of sustainable aviation fuel, marking Chicago O'Hare and Miami International Airports as second and third on its list of U.S. hubs receiving blended SAF. The company began deliveries at both airports in October, just six months after its first major deployment at LAX. At Chicago O'Hare, FedEx is taking on a blend that includes 1 million gallons of NEAT SAF at a minimum 30% mix provided by AirBP. The company became the first all-cargo airline in the country to purchase and use SAF at the airport. Archer shares Midnight's powertrain tech with the Omen crew. Archer Aviation apparently decided that next-gen aircraft manufacturing wasn't enough of a business model for it and is expanding its offerings to powertrain sales. The company recently inked its first deal on this side of the industry, supplying its proprietary electric powertrain to Andereal Industries and the UAE-based Edge Group for the Omen Autonomous Air Vehicle. The powertrain was designed and built in-house using nearly 1 million square feet of U.S. manufacturing and test facilities. Rocket Lab sets annual launch record with two in two days. Rocket Lab Corporation completed two launches in two days from its launch sites in two hemispheres, in the process setting a new annual launch record with missions number 17 and 18, recording a 100% success rate. Rocket Lab's 17th mission was its third haste launch this year, and sixth overall for its suborbital electron variant for hypersonic technology test flights. The mission was launched on November 18th from the company's Launch Complex 2 on Wallops Island, Virginia. Perseverance rover finds metallic rock on Mars. 
Perseverance, NASA's Mars rover, found a rock on the planet's surface that may have come from an ancient asteroid impact. The rock, named Fipsoxla, is shiny in appearance and stood out from the flat terrain around it, while tests revealed high levels of nickel and iron. Those elements are typical of meteorites found on both Mars and Earth. Other rovers have found metallic rocks on Mars, but this may be the first for Perseverance. According to NASA, it's actually somewhat surprising that Perseverance has not seen one until now. That's it for our Next Gen Minute. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Army Aviation explores and expands drone applications. The Army's 3rd Combat Aviation Brigade is running with the service's push to boost drone integration by pairing Apaches, Black Hawks, and Chinooks with small unmanned aircraft to handle recon, route surveillance, and other jobs that used to rely on pilots squinting out the window. One of the bigger shifts is happening in the field workshops. Soldiers at Hunter Army Airfield recently trained on the Expeditionary Manufacturing Cell, a deployable 3D printing system that lets crews produce drone parts on demand. They printed more than 90 components in a few hours, rather than praying for replacements to trickle down the supply chain. UAS operators, repairers, and trade specialists then pushed the components straight into first-person view drones, moving from fabrication to flight testing in the same training cycle. The brigade isn't swapping out its helicopters anytime soon, however. The core aircraft still carry the mission load, with Apaches on strike, Black Hawks on medevac and assault, and Chinooks on transporting the heavy stuff. What's changing is how these aircraft enter the fight. Unmanned teams scout landing zones, target air defense threats, and provide a live video feed that shortens the time between spotting a threat and hitting it. After these messages, Starship's first V3 booster crumples in pre-launch testing. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. Starship's first V3 booster crumples in pre-launch testing. The debut of SpaceX's Starship version 3 booster didn't exactly go as planned, with its test campaign starting and ending before the sun even rose. Booster 18 suffered a major structural failure partway into what was supposed to be a long list of cryogenic checks and pressure trials at Massey's. The booster entered its first round of cryogenic and pressurization tests after dark on November 20th at the company's Massey test site, located a short distance from Starbase. Instead, at approximately 4.04 a.m., live streams watched as the lower liquid oxygen tank abruptly collapsed inward, producing a fast, clean crumple something like an aluminum can. SpaceX and Elon Musk have offered no public explanation so far. Booster 18's loss carries weight. V3 hardware is supposedly SpaceX's answer to recurring design issues seen in earlier boosters, and this unit was slated for a full round of cryogenic conditioning before moving into Raptor engine installation and static fire testing. Clearly, it didn't get that far, leaving the company without its only complete V3 booster on the stand. On the bright side, the incident was less dramatic than June's upper stage explosion at the same site, mostly because no engines were installed. Infrastructure damage also appears limited. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.